welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a great day. So this video is going to be a bit of a sit down chatty video. If you want to grab a cup of tea, I recommend you do. I actually have just some water with apple cider vinegar in it. It's so good for you and it's actually really tasty and quite refreshing. Do you guys know it was 33 degrees in Ireland today? What the heck? I'm melting, especially sitting with these like filming lights around me. It's so hot. I'm probably gonna end up with sweat patches. Anyway, this video is a chatty video and I'm talking to you guys about why your makeup may not look like Beauty Guru's makeup. I saw Charlotte Holdcroft did a video about this and talking about the same thing, why your makeup doesn't look like Beauty Guru's makeup. And I think it's a really important subject to talk about. My role as, I hate to say it, but a Beauty Guru or influencer, to be honest, I hate both those terms, but I think that's what we are called. My role as one of those, I take it very seriously and I take the self-confidence of you guys, my followers, very seriously. How you guys feel about yourselves is very important to me, like as important as how I feel about myself. And I think you guys will probably know that because I do do a lot of videos talking about self-confidence. Um, I care about it so much that I'm actually writing a book about self-confidence and I'm almost there guys. I'm up to chapter six. I probably have about four chapters left to go and when I've actually finished the book then I can start looking at getting it published. So hopefully I'll be able to get it out by the end of the year. You guys are gonna love it. Well, I think you're gonna love it. I hope you will. But last month I finished listening to an audiobook that I've been listening to called The Confidence Code and it's epic. It's all about feeling strong within yourself as a woman and kind of dealing with self-esteem issues and not feeling like you're good enough. And I was just thinking to myself the whole time I was listening to it, I was like, my followers would love this because I know a lot of us as women and even men as well struggle with self-confidence, not just with looks, but like how we feel about ourselves. So I really think you guys should listen to it. It's on Audible, which is, um, it's like an audiobook service online. I'm subscribed to it. I've been signed up to Audible for the last two or three years. I did speak about it in a couple of other videos as well. I find it incredibly helpful. Audible have worked with me on this video and I'm so excited to say that they're offering you guys, my followers, a free 30-day trial of the service and also a free book to download of your choice. Audible don't do free accounts so I think the whole offer is pretty epic and I definitely recommend you take advantage of it. I highly recommend that you download the confidence code but you don't have to. You can download any book you want but if you do struggle with like being assertive, being too kind, kind of feeling like, you know, have you guys heard of imposter syndrome? I have that so badly. If you guys feel anything like that or you suffer with self-esteem issues, I think you're going to love the confidence code. So if you go to www.audible.com forward slash Stephanie Lang, you can sign up for your free 30 days and then download the book. Otherwise, you can text my name, Stephanie Lang, to 500 500 and then you can get your free 30 days and get the free book. Is my lighting too bright? I don't ever change my lighting and sometimes I feel like I sit down and I can see myself in the viewfinder and I'm just brighter sometimes than others even though there's like no natural light right now because it's nighttime. but anyway I'm gonna tone it down. Okay guys tell me down below did that make it better or is it too dark now because I honestly can't tell. Okay so why your makeup doesn't look like Beauty Gurus and why it possibly may never look like Beauty Gurus makeup. It's not that Beauty Gurus are any prettier than you, we're not more talented than you, you don't suck at makeup, there just are a few specific reasons why a lot of the time Beauty Gurus makeup will look better than the average person's makeup. And because I am a Beauty Guru I suppose, I feel like from where I sit, I can kind of just be completely honest with you guys and tell you what those things are so that hopefully you won't compare yourself neg negatively or compare your own skills negatively to someone you see on the internet. First of all, the amount of makeup that us beauty gurus, and I'm not talking about every beauty guru here, but you know, you'll know probably the ones I am talking about. A lot of us will wear a whole load of makeup and what may look good in kind of our filming setup and what may look good on camera it doesn't always look good in real life and if you guys try and copy you know exactly and try and recreate a makeup tutorial exactly that you see online if you then go and look at yourself in real life you're probably going to end up with cakey foundation it's not it's just not going to look very good and it's not because you're not good at makeup it's because beauty gurus put so much makeup on their faces and theirs probably doesn't look good in real life either i mean it looks great on camera it looks great in this flattering studio lighting it looks great with a smoothing filter over the top, but it doesn't look great in real life. And so it's not you guys that suck at makeup, it's just that that kind of sheer amount of makeup, you know, all the baking, the tons of powder, the copious amounts of highlight, the four different concealers and five different foundations, looks great on camera, it doesn't look good in real life. And if a real person in real life tries to recreate that, it's just gonna look 
like a cakey mess. Another thing that's really important to note is that when you see a makeup tutorial online or when you see like a picture on Instagram, remember you're not seeing that makeup when it's been on the beauty guru for four hours and they've been sweating and their skin's become oily and they've had to touch up or they've eaten. You're seeing that makeup straight after it's put on. When it's still fresh, it's still flawless, it's still perfect. So I mean of course it looks good then but I swear if you looked at that beauty guru in real life five or six hours later with that makeup on, it would look just the same as yours. Another thing to note is that a lot of the time um, we will have practiced this makeup look that we're doing a tutorial on a few times to make sure that we can get it right for when we film it. It's not as though we're magicians that can just sit down and pull out this completely flawless artistic look. I mean some people can but I know myself if I'm doing like um, you know a sponsored video or I want to make a video really 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 good I'll practice the look beforehand so that I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm going to do on camera and I know that it's going to look good. And the reason we can kind of do that is because this is our job so you know when you guys will be at work for like an eight hour day for example working we're doing the same but we're doing makeup so we have the time to sit down and practice that look before we then go and put it out to the public whereas for you guys I mean it may not be feasible to sit down and just play with makeup for eight hours per day. Another thing is that makeup looks different on different people and because everyone's got different features. So for example, if you have hooded eyes and you try to recreate an eye look by Jaclyn Hill, just for example, um, it's not gonna look as good on your eyes, quite frankly, because Jaclyn Hill's got these huge, open, big eyelids and hooded eyes are just a completely different shape. So what looks good on her eyelids won't flat out hooded eye as well. So what I always try and recommend to you guys is to tweak um, makeup tutorials to see your own features. I mean in reality you probably don't want your makeup to look exactly the same as a beauty guru's makeup because unless you are their twin or you have the exact same features as them it may not be as flattering on your particular features. So get to know your own features and then you'll know where you should tweak makeup tutorials to suit and flatter your own face. Um, one thing that I noticed when I was trying to recreate Nikki tutorials tutorial and I didn't even realize that I probably myself do this as well is that a lot of the time beauty gurus, gurus will leave out really important parts of the tutorial purely because one we think that you already know it two we think you've probably seen it a million times before so you don't need to see it in that particular tutorial or three to save time but as the person trying to recreate that makeup tutorial it makes a huge difference when there's like steps missing because then you're kind of left floundering like well what the heck do I do now and I only realized that when I was trying to follow Nikki's tutorial so I'm very attuned to that fact now and I try to if I am going to skip a step I'll make sure I say what that step is and kind of do like a little whiz by it so you guys can still see what I'm doing but I am still saving time at the same time so you guys don't end up having to watch a three hour long makeup tutorial. Another thing this one is like an Instagram one so I mean with Instagram photos I myself, these days I'm finding myself falling into the trap of like comparing myself to what I see on Instagram and I never used to do that. I think it's just because it's becoming so much more saturated like the beauty guru and like the Instagram baddie thing is just like massive and I'm still a regular Joe at the end of the day. Like I may do this as my job but I'm still a human and these things like that affect you guys affect me too. But then on the flip side because I do do this as a job I'm able to see what's happening in the background to make these great looking pictures. A lot of it comes down to angles and lenses. Angles like guys I well, honestly to get a good picture of myself when I'm trying to show off a makeup look or trying to get a nice Instagram picture I swear I'll probably get I'll get Darren to take about 50 different pictures of the same thing but just I'll like move my head like tiny bits or I'll change my expression a little bit and I swear to you guys 45 of those photos look terrible and maybe five of them I think are decent and then I whittle it down to the one that I put on Instagram I don't snap one picture and look amazing in it I wish I wish that would happen but it doesn't also like lenses distort things so um I always avoid taking photos of myself with my phone camera, like the front facing one, um, because it distorts my face and like certain lenses on cameras will do that. So like say for example you do a really nice makeup on yourself and then you go to take a photo of it with your phone or your camera and you're like 
Oh my god, I'm hideous. You're not hideous. The camera lens distorts things. It kind of makes your head like a ball shape almost. And so whatever's in the middle, it kind of brings that forward even more and makes it more pronounced. And everything else shrinks into the background. So your eyes end up looking tiny. Your nose ends up looking huge. Your mouth ends up looking like a beak. And you're just like, oh, stuff it all. So a lot of the time what I do to avoid that and to actually get a good photo is I'll put my camera on a tripod like way over there so that I don't end up with this distortion of my face and then I'll just put it on self timer or I've got this little thing here which I can click and it'll take the photo for me without me having to like stretch my arm out to take the photo. So it's not that beauty gurus are any more photogenic or any prettier than you guys, it's that we've probably taken about a million gazillion photos of ourselves and we learn eventually what looks good in photos. Another thing, and this like, it sounds a bit cheeky to say but I've um, heard of a lot of instances of people meeting like beauty gurus in real life and being horrified at how their makeup looks and I feel so mean saying that and I've, I'm not going to say any names obviously and I mean that could even happen to me I don't know because people aren't mean they're not going to tell me if they think I look terrible in real life but a lot of the time if you do see a beauty guru in person you'll kind of be shocked at how their makeup looks so different in person to what it does online or in pictures like I said I mean beauty gurus pack on a lot of makeup and just being completely honest with you guys I don't think that amount of makeup looks good in real life in daylight and stuff so if you ever do compare yourself to a beauty guru remember if you were to see them at your local grocery shop they're not going to look the same at the grocery shop as they do with their like flattering studio lights and all that jazz a lot of it legit is just smoke and mirrors another thing beauty gurus are I suppose a lot of the time professional makeup artists so if you're not a professional makeup artist and you just kind of you know really enjoy makeup it's a hobby for you it's a passion for you comparing your makeup skills to a professional makeup artist it's kind of mean to yourself in a way that would be like me cooking a meal and then beating myself up because Jamie Oliver's version turned out better than mine. Another thing um, is editing and that's with Instagram mostly but YouTube as well. I'm personally extremely open and honest with you guys about my photo editing because I do edit my photos. I've done a video on it. Um, I'll put it up here and I'll link it in the description box down below for you guys. I'm pretty sure that every beauty guru, influencer, Instagram baddie, we all, they all edit their pictures. I think there's probably a tiny minority of people that don't, but I would say 99.9% .9 of the people edit the pictures that you see. It may not always be obvious, but I would say that they're always edited in some way. I mean, we can edit the colors, we can edit the saturation, the contrast, we can edit the lighting, we can remove blemishes, you can skew around with your face, you can make your nose look smaller, you can make your eyes look bigger, you can whiten your teeth, you can airbrush your skin. But before you hear that and then judge us all super harshly, remember this is our job and our job is to create nice images of makeup. And to be honest, editing is a huge part of that. So if you do your makeup and then take a picture of it and wonder why your picture looks so crap compared to what you see on Instagram, remember that if you spent hours editing that picture, it would look just as good as what you see on Instagram. So with all those things taken into consideration, I want to remind you guys to please never ever compare yourself negatively to any person you see online. You don't know how much editing's gone into it. You don't know if they've got like a skin smoothing filter over the top of their video. You don't know if they're having fillers, if they're having regular facials, like all these things the beauty gurus get as part of the job perks, I suppose, make such a huge difference. And if you had all those same things that what beauty gurus have, your makeup would look just as perfect as what you think theirs does. Beauty gurus are regular people just like you. So you are good at makeup, you are gorgeous, you are absolutely stunning, and I hope you always remember that. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.